So um, the next part, which uh, generally, you know, after you're passing PLAB um, exam, uh, uh, the APIC verification and GMC registration and certain times the other documents, more documents are required for that, or the process is different, um, can get complicated for some IMGs. I know some of them struggle with that. Uh, so I'll start with, uh, should we start with Noman about that? Noman, would you be able to share your APIC uh, advice on APIC registration and GMC registration process? Yeah, for sure. So for EPIC, I think it depends on your medical college, basically. So how 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 uh, how they are responding? If they are responding in time, for ex for example, uh, uh, for me, I applied for EPIC uh, during my house job, and it took just one week for me. So if you have someone uh, you know in your medical college, just let them know that I've applied for EPIC, and they'll ask for the verification. So please do have a check on it. So they do that. So, but I've seen people, uh, for some people, uh, their medical colleges are taking like months, two months, three months. So the earlier, the earlier you apply for the EPIC, uh, the more better. Yeah. Any advice on GMC registration then? So uh, for GMC registration, uh, it's, it's very simple. You just need five things. You just need your primary medical qualification. That's your degree. You need your IELTS or OET certificate. You need a good standing certificate that you need to apply. And the other thing is, I think, uh, I think, uh, yeah, your house job certificate and your passport. Yeah. So these five things you need for your gym series. It's a very straightforward process and they let you know when you pass your plan. So don't need to, you don't need to worry about that. But what you can do is that only the catch is in the good standing certificate. So Sometimes it takes time to have the good standing certificate. So what I did, so before I went to, uh, before I came here for my PLAB 2, I just applied for the good standing certificate. So by the time I, uh, I got my result, I was already having the good standing certificate with me. So I just got my registration quickly. So you can do that. Yeah. So you, you're saying if you bring your good standing certificate when you're coming for PLAB, that's a better option. So Yeah, you, you just apply for it. So by the time you give your PLAB and you pass it, yeah. the process would have been completed in your home country. And then you can just, uh, you know, ask someone to career it or, you know, send by someone. Because sometimes they do not ask the hard copy. Sometimes they do ask the hard copy. So if you need to post it, then you, you need to ask someone to, you know, send it. Yeah. Okay. So Dr. Raja, because I'm sorry to cut you off because we're in Pakistan. I just want to cover this. Okay. So uh, like Noman said, um, so we have pa a Pakistan Medical Commission. Now it's no longer PMDC. So uh, medical PMC, what it's doing is I recently applied for it for all those who are trying to get it right now. Uh, there are two things. The one thing is that they're giving it to you within two weeks, which is very, which is good news for all of us. Never seen before. That's one thing. The second thing is that um, you don't need a hard copy for your documents anymore. You, you just email GMC everything in a soft copy now for the during the COVID. So yeah, don't need a hard copy for the for, for the PM uh, for the good standing, and it goes to the uh, to the GMC through an email. On the things that Noman has mentioned is the same, same like the, the good standing certificate, the medical degree, the, um, the yes. uh, house job certificates. Everything is similar. The five documents that Noman has mentioned, Noman has this video on, uh, on YouTube as well. So guys, you could watch that. Those five things are the same. Uh, the only uh, thing I would add is that there's something called uh, an employer reference form. Okay, if like I started doing my house job, even before I got my provisional registration from the PMDC who was dissolved at that time, apparently. Hence, I would recommend and when you guys are getting your good standing certificate made, get the employer reference form filled from uh, your, you know, your, um, uh, your, you know, your, uh, house job the hospital you did your house job in basically because they need you need to justify how were you working even before your provisional license came in these two documents take a lot of time hence get them prepared beforehand all right so just staying on pakistan i'll go to Hassan and uh, ask him uh, about the ep epic and uh, G registration process uh, did you have any advice well uh, it's almost the same but for epic first we have to make an account on epic and it takes uh, two to three days for the account to get made. And then there's this verification process. For the account to make, you should have your credit card with you. You should have your passport with you. You should have a picture 
and uh, a couple of other things uh, because they ask these details when you're making the account. Uh, then there's this verification process and I found it quite, quite interesting because there was uh, an oath commissioner from Norway that took my oath and I was basically holding a passport in my hand and raising the other hand and saying that I am this, this and this and so uh, <laughs> after this they send an email to your medical college and basically uh, someone from the department of medical education or your principal or anyone has to reply them back and uh, that's it. I mean it can be done in as short as a week or it could take a few weeks. It basically depends on your medical college. Uh, after they have verified you, they will send a report of your EPIC verification directly to the GMC. This is basically an option which you will select while making an account. So you don't need to do anything about it. Your EPIC verification will be sent to the GMC. So whenever you apply for GMC registration, GMC will already have your EPIC verified. And you just need to give uh, those five documents that Numan mentioned. And uh, that's it. That's your GMC registration done. Okay. Uh, should we go to Dr. Anush and ask him if his uh, experience from India around EPIC and uh, the GMC registration in UK? Well, uh, regarding the EPIC, I would uh, suggest most of the uh, students to start working on it after PLAB 1 because you have time on your hand, you're waiting for your dates for PLAB 2, working around the visa issue. And if you just, you know, finish this EPIC, one thing is out of the way, you don't need to worry about it after your PLAB 2. So you can concentrate on the exam because it's quite uh, straightforward and simple as most of uh, my colleagues, colleagues have already mentioned. So EPIC, yes, your college or your university is the most important thing. And they do play an important role because they need to reply back to the uh, verifier saying that yes this person was a student this person has uh, done this uh, medical degree and we verify and we certify that but things can get complicated if you are the first person going and applying for epic from that university or from that college because they don't know the system the college is not uh, used to it so it, it can take a bit of time but if there are, you know, your former students, your, you know, alumni, they are already uh, done this EPIC, either go, gone to US for USMLE or UK PLAB, then the EPIC will already have established relationship with the, you know, medical college and things can be very fast. It can be done within a day or two. But if you are the first person, as uh, Norman has already mentioned, you need to know someone in the medical college or the university and you need to chase them up and saying, you know, I need this thing done. They'll be sending you an email. This is what they expect. This is how you need to reply. And you need to basically orient them as to how it needs to be done. So that can be a tricky if you are from a you know, medical college, which has either changed the university or has become autonomous or you know newly started one. So that's one tricky thing regarding EPIC. And GMC registration, as everyone has mentioned, the documents need to be sent. You know, these days it's easier because it's a soft copy email you send them. But there's one thing which becomes tricky. If you have immediately finished your graduation, done your PLAB and you know uh, applying for it, everything is simple and straightforward. But if you have a gap, you need to explain the gap for the last five years, I suppose, if I'm right, you know, you can uh, verify it. You need to uh, tell the GMC what you were doing specifically during those time. You know, you can, it can be anything, whatever you were doing, whether, you know, women, if, you know, they, they were married, they were uh, raising a family, taking care of them, you can simply explain. Or if, you know, you were diversifying, you are pursuing a different uh, uh, field, you are doing something else, you are traveling, you have hobbies which you wanted to pursue, you can put that. Or a few people would be preparing for competitive exams, you know, in India, they'll be preparing for different, different exams, be it Indian exams, US exams or UK exams. You can say that I was preparing for these exams and I was also doing, you know, certain things like I was doing a voluntary work, I was, you know, working part-time or I was studying purely uh, preparing for the exam. So, Basically, that has to be satisfactory. Otherwise, you'll be getting a volley of emails from the GMC saying that we are not happy with your response. We are not satisfied. And they can, this can go on, which is uh, the issue which mo most of uh, people with CAP, they bring it up and they'll be like, you know, I don't know what to do next. So if you explain it honestly, tell them what you have done. So GMC registration also will be a cakewalk and it will be done easily. So EPIC and GMC, even though they sound very tricky and a lengthy process, if you plan it in the right way, time it in a proper way, it can be done easily. 
Uh, Mohammed, uh, I'll ask you from uh, Egyptian point of view, uh, the EPIC verification, uh, if there's any problem or GMS registration, you get any difficulties? Um, no, uh, actually the same as uh, Enosh said, uh, it's better to start uh, for EPIC early uh, because sometimes it may be complicated, uh, especially if you have changed your, um, your faculty. But uh, the thing is, uh, if you prefer it uh, very early, uh, just mm -hmm. don't send the report the EPIC report to the GMC, uh, you can postpone this uh, step uh, when you uh, are applying for the registration because it is uh, it has a validity and you will do it uh, when you uh, apply for the registration. Uh, the second thing regarding the GMC registration here in Egypt, um, the, um, the gold standing certificate uh, take around, me, uh, sometimes you, if you, you can take it in the same day and sometimes you can take it around one week, but it has a validity also for three months. So I will suggest to um, just, you know, um, prepare for it or get it when you apply for the registration, not uh, earlier. Um, that's it. Uh -huh. The other stuff is, are similar. Hmm. I'll, uh, I'll go to Anush for uh, one question that, which comes from India is, uh, see, every medical college and the system is different. And like in Pakistan, you, you, when you do MBBS, you get your MBBS certificate and then you go and do your house job. Uh, I, I've heard in India that uh, your internship is sometimes part of your medical um, uh, um, uh, qualification as well. Is, is, is that right that you sort of do it as a part of and you get registration after that? Yes, that's right. So uh, how it happens in India is once you finish your final year exams, yeah. you, uh, whichever state you are in, you register with that state uh, medical council provisionally. So you get a provisional medical registration and you start working as an intern. So your graduation doesn't happen till you finish your internship. So once you finish your internship or housemanship, then with the completed internship form, you need to go on submitting your university saying that this is my completed internship. This is my uh, degree, which was provided. And, you know, that's when the graduation happens. You will be handed over the official medical degree. And also based on uh, that official medical degree, you can go to the uh, medical council and apply for a permanent uh, medical registration. And one of the other questions which comes from India around, uh, as you mentioned, the medical councils are different. In Pakistan, for example, the PM, PMDC or PMC covers the whole country. But in India, I understand the medical councils for different states are different. So is there complicated when you are registered with two different states or you're working in two different states? I, I've, I've heard some in Indian doctors talking about that complication. Yes, uh, as uh, you have rightly brought it up that there are quite a few states in India and every state has its own medical council. So when you're registered with one state, automatically your name gets entered into the uh, central thing, which is the medical council of India. So it is already registered in the central uh, uh, medical council of India registered as well. So if you are, you know, uh, registered in, in a state, that means you can practice in most of the states, but most of the states prefer their own medical council. So what they insist is, you know, transfer your medical council registration from that state to our state. So what happens, you need to go apply for a no objection certificate from the previous state medical council, come to the new state and say that I have no objection from them. So I want to get myself registered. So then you get registered in this and then your old uh, state, the medical council registration will be terminated mm -hmm. and you'll be enrolled in this. But in the entire process, your registration in the central thing wouldn't change and it would still be the same. So you are still considered as a doctor in India. And there's, there's good and good standing certificate. So if you're working for two different states or uh, registered with two different states, this is, this is where some of the IMDs asked me that get complicated. Where do you get the good standing certificate from? Is that the current state you are with or, or is it from both? So what happens when you're registered with, you know, uh, two different councils, medical council, most often than not, the previous medical council, your registration would be uh, absolved and you'll be registered in the current state medical council. So it is advisable to get it from the current state medical council. You apply with them and you get it. But when you're already, you hold two current registrations from two different states, you can get from the latest state where you're working, or you can directly go to the Medical Council of India and directly apply from them. So you can get it directly from the central thing as well. No, oh, thank you for uh, clarifying that. Uh, Dr. Daniel, do you want to add anything from the Nigerian point of view around the uh, EPIC verification and uh, uh, the GMC registration? 
process? Uh, well, there's nothing to add. Everybody has actually covered all that needs to be said. But for Nigerians, I'll advise them to create what we call a domiciliary account. The reason being, um, there are limits to the payments you can make internationally now in my country. Currently, you can only pay for a hundred dollars per month. You can own that's the limit. So, for example, um, GMC, sorry, plus two exams is eight hundred and seventy-five pounds. Uh, APP registration is about two hundred and um, everything's about two hundred and thirty dollars, I guess. So, you can't make that transaction with the limit of hundred dollars on your account. So, you need to create an entirely different account to be able to make those payments. So, they need to take note of that and create it before time, so they don't run into troubles while you're doing a registration process. Okay, thank you. Thank I think you. I'll go to the questions uh, now. There are some specific questions. Um, um, maybe Sana, you were also reading them, but you mentioned Sana around the employer reference form, which you think you, you you said you used. They're saying asking where do you download that from? Okay, so it's easily available on Google. The first thing you write, like employer reference form, GMC registration, and comes up. So it's right there. Okay, and regarding the GMC registration, um, I think a few people have mentioned. Do you do you sort of do it in the go when you come here to do the PLAB exam or do you have to go back to the country and then do it again? Because I, I think this will depend on the, since the COVID, I think a lot of laws has changed. In the past, I was I was looking, a lot of IMGs were uh, coming here, doing PLAB and going back and then coming back for GMC registration and uh, applying for jobs um, separately. So, but now things have a little bit different. What would you, what would be your advice? So let me just ask, I mean, maybe I should go to Norman and ask him first. This problem with his mic. Let me uh, go over Asan first and then I'll come back to him once he sorted out his mic. So basically, previously what happened was there was this uh, ID identification process, uh, which has now changed. So previously you had to come back and just get this ID check done in Manchester. But now, uh, while on the day of your PLAB 2 exam, you get this ID check done. So there's no need to come back to the UK again. Uh, also, uh, with COVID, GMC is uh, very helpful with things, so they don't ask you for a lot of things via hard copy and posts. Uh, they accept emails and soft copies for a lot of things. So ideally, uh, if you don't want to stay here, uh, it's good if you can go home after your PLAP2 exam because the result would take four to five weeks to come and then uh, you can start the process of GMC registration. So unless you're doing an attachment or anything like that, I don't see a point in staying here. Uh, this is some precious time which you can spend with your family because once you're here in the UK, you'll get very little time to go back uh, and spend with your family. So you can go back right after the exam. It depends on uh, whatever suits you and whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, Naman, do you want to add anything to that uh, about the uh, registration? Uh, no, uh, I think, yeah, very well said by Hassan. I think that's the point. It depends. If you if you are doing something, then you can stay. Otherwise, you can go and you can do all the things uh, in your own way. Yeah. Dr. Raja, I want to add something. Uh, I just want to say, guys, that um, see, there's, there's COVID, okay? Then there is this checks and tests that you have to do at every point when you come in and fly back and all of that. My advice to all of the IMGs would be that when you're coming here, before coming here, arrange for a clinic and attachment for yourself. Okay, it is it, it would really help you because, you know, it, it's going to help you score a job. It's going to help you in, in learning more, understanding the system, gelling well, understanding how things work, seeing if UK is for you or not, or like so many things. I would say once you're coming here, plan for a clinical attachment, get a clinical attachment, do it, and, and then go back home. That's that's my um, opinion about this. Thank you. Um, I think there is a specific question for Anush, but uh, that might, that just, uh, he, he may answer it for the for everybody as well. But basically, somebody is asking, how can you, how can I build a strong CV as a medical student in India? But I think that the things he'll probably say will be useful for all of us, and not just for India. For India. For India. Uh, well, regarding uh, first thing, I want to be a bit cheeky here regarding staying back after finishing PLAB two exam and you know registration. I just want yeah. to add this bit because yeah. everyone has been more you know oriented towards you know goal career and things like that. I want to 
you know, diversify it and make it more personal as well. It depends on the person because there are a few people who are very emotionally attached with their families. And in this period of COVID where there's so much of uncertainty, once you do the uh, attachment, get a job, it's extremely hard to go back. You never know when you can get that holiday, when you get, get that uh, travel free period where you can just go see your family and come back. If you want to have some solid time with them, finish your attachment, go back, spend your time with family, you know, make the full use of it, you know, treasure those days and then come back and start working because you don't need to ideally stay here to do it. Or if you don't want to do an attachment, you, you might as well because a clinical attachment is something which, you know, is a brownie, but it is not a mandatory thing. You can still get a job without a clinical attachment. If you want to treasure your time with family, you can always go back, spend time with them, and then come back and do whatever you want to do. And regarding uh, Dr. Raja's question regarding how to build a strong CV to you know, come and work in UK, it's always important to know what you want. So it, it should be very um, ideal and it should be very uh, uh, something which you can achieve. So if you want to become a psychiatrist, I'm sure that you, most of you would take Dr. Raja as an inspiration and you'd keep bugging him in Facebook messaging saying that, what should I be doing? Which course should I attend? You know, which thing? So these are uh, mentors who you look up to. So in every department, there are mentors. There are people who, who can guide you. So once you decide that this is what I'm going to do. So I want to be a doctor in NHS. I want to pursue a particular field. I want to do this. You can always contact these eminent personalities in whatever social media platform and they can guide you what is important and specific for that particular department because not every department has the same requirement and you, you might be do, doing a, you know a course like ALS you might be doing a course like you know a basic life support or things like that which is a very broad and you know non specific thing but specific things are different with every put, every department and it is very individualized so once you decide that this is what i want to be then you contact the eminent people in that department and get the guidance from them and if you just want to come be a doctor rotate in every department see how it works and then explore you can as well start by doing you know certain attending rcp royal college of physician courses or cpd because most of the things have become online you don't need to come in person and attend it. You can just, you know, at the comfort of your home, you can sit and watch and they'll give you a CPD point. And then you can put it on your CV saying that this was my passion and this is what I have achieved. And then there are certain things called quality improvement project. You find a problem in the system where you're working and you try fixing it. So what are the measures you have taken to rectify it? So you can do it like a project in the sense, this is the problem which I've identified. These are the measures which I've put in place. And this is the result which I've got. And when I went back, the problem was rectified. I couldn't find the problem. So that is some sample, simple projects which you can do in your home country. And then you can, you know, put it on your system and paper. And always, you know, doing a thesis, presenting uh, in conferences, be it national or international, or publishing an uh, article, research paper, all these things would add up and make your CV more attractive. You know, and as Dr. Raja always mentioned, even if you have a gap, make sure you keep updating your clinical skills, you know, either by uh, doing courses online or updating your knowledge by attending some conferences, seminars, or things like that. Make sure you're in touch with that. So by doing all of this, irrespective of whether you have gap or you have the continuity, that will make you a person who can understand what's going on in the current world. For example, a person goes to a sleep for three months and then gets up and suddenly he has COVID. He has no idea what to do. So his life would be in a panic and he would be miserable. So that would be a life of a medical doctor who is not updating himself. Suddenly he realizes everything has changed and he doesn't know what to do. So to keep up with the NHS system, as most of my colleagues have mentioned, NICE is a good guidelines and NHS UK is somewhere where you can pick up things. So keep reading this in your free time and keep adapting yourself to the system. By the time you come here, you're already set. You have a launch pad and you can start firing. Okay. Thank you very much, Anusha. I think I'll ask the same question from Hassan uh, um, as well. Uh, Hassan, you were working in, uh, in NHS now. 
so if a medical student ask you or if you think about yourself as a medical student what would you have done differently or what would you advise them uh well to start with there's an excellent article written by dr raja dhan and uh, it says developing cv in line with medical practices in the nhs so just google it and uh, like developing cv in line with medical practices by dr raja dhan and you will get a link to that article uh just to sum it up as a medical student you can involve yourself in a lot of extra curricular activities they don't all need to be related to medicine they could be related to leadership skills management teaching skills but just make sure that you get certificates for them and you document them uh, as well another thing would be participating in the community medicine research project that happens while you're in your penultimate year or your final year and uh, trying to get it published i know it's difficult to publish as a medical student but if you can get it published as a medical student there's nothing like that after your mbbs when while you're working as a house officer doing an audit or a quality improvement project that kind of uh, adds that, that kind of adds a lot to your cv and it's a very important aspect uh, when uh, you'll be getting hired at the nhs and when you'll take up all these interviews so yeah to sum it up there's stuff you can do as a medical student and then there's stuff as you can do as a doctor house job or junior doctor to add on two quality improvement projects and audits there's teaching which you can do and teaching is highly regarded in, in the uk as well so i know we teach a lot of juniors during our house job we need, we teach medical students a lot but there is no formal record of it so either get feedback or get certificates uh, from your professors both of them would help you develop your cv and apply for jobs at the nhs later on thank you um sana uh, have you got any more questions uh, around uh... yes 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 we do um so um we would need a word of optimism from asan noman and inosh regarding um there is a lot of saturation and uncertainty uh nowadays during the covid times of the jobs and you know the exams and everything so everybody is asking again and again what about the uncertainty what about the saturation so we need some optimism from you guys well yes there is saturation but what can you do about it you can only prepare for the best and for the worst as well you can only do what you can so prepare well do what you can do all the hard work and don't worry about the saturation and to be honest there is no such saturation here the hiring process is difficult i know because especially because of covid and visa restrictions and everything but every day we face huge shortage huge rota gaps and we are actually being harassed by staff paying to do some locum shifts just yesterday i got four messages uh, to do like there were like 20 shifts just announced yesterday so i mean that is 20 doctors needed to cover those shifts so there is no saturation it's just uh, the hiring process is uh, getting delayed and there uh, are some issues due to covid yes it's not as easy it's not a piece of cake as it used to be in 2016 and 2017 mm. if you call this saturation well uh, you're right but uh, i wouldn't call it saturation i can just wish you the best of luck and i can tell you how to prepare for it even if there is saturation how you can make yourself distinct from other students and uh, the articles which i've just mentioned and the advices which all of my learned colleagues have given before uh, just follow those and uh, inshallah you'll get into the nhs and you'll be working as a doctor and you'll be fine in the coming months and the coming years uh, i'm happy to take any questions even after the session if you want to message me on facebook or email me or anything uh, i'm glad to help thank you sana you were going to ask the same question from uh, somebody else. yeah so i just uh, inosh could you tell us do you think it's saturated and do you think um, uh, what and what do you think about the uncertainty and what would you say to those who've gotten their flap to seats cancelled and cancelled and cancelled all over again what would you say to those people well uh, the saturation should never be a problem because we come from countries where there is so much of competition rate 
and you know trying to get into a medical school medical university or college itself is a huge challenge and i'm sure all of you guys would agree with that so if you have done that if you have achieved a seat in a medical college i'm sure you would definitely achieve a job in nhs because this is no different from what you have endured during the entry process into a medical college and i'm sure it is much better than that because there is always vacancy as asan has mentioned that there are so many vacancies but you need to prove that you are the right person how do you prove that you are the right person start acting like one you know if you want to be a doctor in uk you you need to understand what is expected from you you need to adapt to that as as the saying goes be a roman in rome don't try to be like uh, you know uh, asian in uh, uh, nhs and that's when you get all these issues and you'd be like i'm struggling and uh, uh, what was the other question uh, sana uh, a word of advice for all those who've been getting the yes exams cancelled exams right? cancelled in the well uh, this is very unfortunate and this is an unprecedented time which is not foreseen which no one could you know anticipate and it is quite challenging and depressing that every time your exam gets cancelled because there is a momentum leading up to the exam you prepare yourself there is you know mind which is getting ready and then suddenly you hear a news that your exam is cancelled you lose all the steam you lose your confidence your preparation you know is wasted and that's when you feel that you know what's the whole point of doing this you feel like giving up that's exactly where it differentiates the tough and the normal people when things get tougher the tough get going they keep pushing themselves they keep pushing harder and then they be like i will not rest till i achieve you can take a break every time your exam gets cancelled take some time off get your mind refreshed you know go for a short trip or you know spend with family make sure that all the stress which you have build it up whatever is you know piled up on your head in your heart is taken off and then come back again fresh saying that this uh, this time i'm starting fresh with a goal to achieve it so this is my new exam date and i'm going to prepare so build up build it up again if you try to take it you know few people try to continue the momentum they be like oh, i'll continue reading till my exam so what happens midway they lo- lose it all they be like whatever i don't bother i just want to finish my exam because there is so much of pressure already so every time you hear a news which is not good or a uh, you know cancellation of an exam just take a break let all the st- stress and steam go out of your body and your head come back fresh start from the scratch and i'm sure you can all of you guys will do all the very best no man is another question that because nowadays it's very difficult to get uh, get the job oh, sorry the the plab 1 and plab 2 seats and then at the same time these people have fcps and the residency thing and they so they are like should we like wait for it or should we pursue residency and then shift like what do we do how do we make this change okay all right so i'll just uh, have uh, i'll just talk a little bit about this job situation so because uh, because of the platform i because of the daily stations i got to know a lot of people i have mentioned this before as well so there are hundreds of doctor i know like i was engaging i was teaching them for lab 2 and doing sessions and all so i got to know a lot of people so many people they do, they are getting jobs but they do not share they have their own reasons i found it. it was surprising for me many people like i just asked one doctor that you know you've got a job like in in one month in one and a half month uh, just share it so that it will just motivate people so he just said that you know it will just cast an evil eye on me or so I, i won't share it some people are just some people they just feel shy some people when they pass they just don't bother about it because they have got what they wanted so there is a big portion of uh people like this they you don't see them so it seems like it's very much saturated yeah it's not so much that much easy like like it used to be before but it's not that bad at the moment and for the uncertainty i would say that like everyone mentioned it's good to have something aside from aside which will you know help you you know psychologically physically like you can have some hobbies you can do like you can you you can do some physical activities some you know have some friends what i did like i was in uh, this uncertain period when the exam got cancelled i just made this group which is like daily station 
it was just an idea to do a little bit so just all the colleagues who suffered this uh, covid thing and the exams got cancelled so we just used to talk with each other and you know boost one another that you know this time will pass and uh, that that's uh, now that's a complete platform now which, which i'm helping many people so just make your own support bubbles and uh, you know just encourage each other so that will help you pass this uncertain times and uh, apart and the last question of those who are doing fcps or residency whatever they are doing so i would say that uh, always it's good to have a backup so if you are doing fcps you've got a training do not miss that go into your training do things you can even join it later on like if you have you you do the lab you can start in nhs on a higher level yeah so it's not a good idea to leave what you have in your like what you have in your hands so yeah that's what i would say yeah so i think dr as we're done with the questions yeah i think um, uh, should we finish it i think we said around from uh, one to uh, 11 to 1 o'clock but uh, i'd like to thank all you guys uh, for uh, uh, all of you for joining this and sharing your insights and and advise um, i think when you were doing that around 120 140 people on facebook were watching live and i'm sure this recording would be saved on facebook um, and i've recorded it on zoom so i'll make portions of it uh, three or four portions and put it on on youtube for somebody who's um, looking for that particular advice but i'd like to thank you all for giving me your time on the saturday i know it's a, a busy, very busy uh, and a lot of you are working as well a busy time to actually take time off your work and then come on um, on this platform and share advice Uh, and if you if you have time, Sana and and and, and uh, other guys, if you have time, you can go on these um, on this Facebook page and answer these questions directly if you want to. Uh, you know, because some some of the questions would be in in the in the comments uh, and directed towards uh, particular uh, particular countries and particular countries. So thank you again, guys, uh, very much. Thank you so much, Doctor uh, Ajay Nan, for having us. Thank you for arranging this, Doctor Ajay. Yeah.